gentleman from New York, the chair of the uh, Rules Committee of the House, uh, Ms. Slaughter, who has worked on this legislation for a very long time, without whose persistence with this bill would not be here today. The on gentlelwoman the floor. from New York is recognized for four minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank my partner, Ms. Bigger, also for the hard work that she has done. Uh, it has taken us collectively 12 years to get to this point, and I want to say at the outset, we're not talking about some population of people who might have bad genes. We're talking about us, because every one of us has bad genes between 30 and 40. So this protection goes not just to some employee somewhere, but all of us and the people we love. Uh, it is with great pride that I rise today. As a matter of fact, I couldn't stop smiling all day. Uh, with the passage of this bill, we're going to stand up for the future health of our citizens and one of medicine's most promising fields, genetic research. It's almost heartbreaking to me to think that we are 10 years behind in genetic research and the people we could have helped up to now. But it is the culmination of a bipartisan effort to prevent the improper use of genetic information in the workforce and in insurance decisions. It's no longer simply the work of science fiction writers. There have been many instances of genetic discrimination. From a woman who was fired after a genetic test revealed her risk for a lung disorder, to a social worker who, despite outstanding performance reviews, was dismissed because some members of her family had Huntington's disease. Consider the case of Heidi Williams, an individual diagnosed with Alpha-1 deficiency. In 2004, she testified that a large health insurance company denied coverage for her two children because they were carriers for the disease. Gina will make these discriminatory practices illegal by prohibiting health insurance from denying coverage or charging higher premiums to a healthy individual because of genetic predisposition, which means you may never get the disease, might happen. Gina also bars employers from using genetic information for hiring, firing, job placement, or promotion decisions. In the 12 years since I first introduced this legislation, the need of it has grown rapidly. Scientific research has advanced so quickly that we can't possibly afford to wait any longer. It offers immense potential for early prevention and treatment of many diseases, and since the sequencing of the home human genome was completed in 2003, researchers have identified genetic markers for a wide variety of chronic health conditions, and new progress is being made every day. 15% of all cancers are found to have an inherited susceptibility. 10% of adult chronic diseases, heart disease and diabetes, are America's top killers, have a genetic component. Already, over 15,500 recognized genetic disorders affect one, 13 million Americans, and each and every one of us, as I said before, and it's so important for you to know this, each and every one of us is in that category carrying between five and 50 bad genes or predictive genes, they may not be so bad. That's exactly why the bill's important to all of us, not just those with recognized disorders. There's not a single plant person on the planet that has the perfect genes. Every one of us, let me make that clear again, are all vulnerable to genetic discrimination. To give you an idea of the potential that exists from this research, consider that a genetic test can tell a woman with a family history of breast cancer if she has the genetic mutation that can cause it long before the cancer might develop. For these exciting scientific advances to continue and for the potential of this technology to be realized, we have to make genetic testing something commonplace rather than something that is feared and kept secret. But sadly, the threat of genetic discrimination and the fear of being passed over for promotion, forced to pay more for health insurance, or even denied coverage, men and women are much less likely to be tested and to take advantage of the potentially life-saving information. Most importantly, if individuals do not participate in the clinical trials, we will never be able to reap the great benefits of this genetic technology. In 2006, cogent research polls had 66% our respondents said they were concerned about how their genetic information would be stored and who would have access to it. Oh, do you have an additional? Time has expired. I'll give you 30 seconds. But the, the I, I'll give you 30 seconds. I want to thank everybody. Someone First, Dr. Recognized. Collins, who sequenced the human genome and testified before Congress at least 12 times, and I can't imagine anybody would not be moved by his testimony. He's here with us today. I want to thank all the leaders of all the committees, certainly Ms. Biggert, who's worked so hard, and her staff, and the three committees who had jurisdiction here who've done so much for us. Mr. Miller, the first thing, I think in January, you told me this bill was coming to the floor, and I want to thank Congresswoman issue 
for her untiring effort to help bring this, and certainly my member of my staff uh, who has worked so hard. It is a great day. You may not realize it, but it's also, it just turns out to be DNA Day. What a wonderful way to celebrate it. Thank you. We put a New Yorker in the chair. I thought you'd get a break on the, the time. The gentleman's time has expired. <laughs> the gentlewoman from Illinois.